Paul Zalkin, a partner in the Quantum Restructuring and Insolvency team, interviews experts from the Airline Management Group to take an in-depth look at what is happening in the aviation sector, looking at its short-term and long-term prospects. In this video, the team shares insight into what liquidity looks like in the sector. Today's webinar is about the future um, and about how industry leaders might shape the global airline and aviation sector in the face of uncertainty and, of course, a fundamental shift in the business landscape. Um, we're joined today by nearly 400 delegates from across the world representing the entire aviation ecosystem, as, the, as well as the supply chain. We've got airlines, providers of capital, and the advisory community. And we're very grateful to um, all of you for taking part in this important conversation. I'm very pleased to be able to introduce an esteemed um, panel of airline and aviation experts here today representing Airline Management Group, which is a leading airline and aviation consultancy, which focuses on shareholder return um, and economic longevity by delivering advisory leadership and implementation services, whether in a startup turnaround or growth context. So um, without further ado, do I will start the discussion and Regus if I could first um, ask you to um, uh, give us some opening comments and just really to sort of set the scene given what the um, aviation, has, aviation sector has experienced um, in recent times. Yes Paul thank you um, and uh, let me say a welcome to everybody who's uh, uh, logged in. Uh, we're all going through a period of searching our um, brains to try and work out what the next steps for the aviation sector should be. So I'd just like to set the scene. The reality is that the last decade has been the most successful financially for the airline industry ever. And at the end of this most successful decade, we now face the deepest crisis ever, the deepest crisis that the airline industry has ever faced. We have uh, airlines that are virtually shut down. We're operating 5% or less of their original operations. And we have airlines that are hemorrhaging money. They're not flying, but they're spending money. A large low-cost carrier in Europe uh, that I was involved in is losing about, paying about $50 million uh, a week uh, just to keep going. The larger airlines are hemorrhaging even greater funds. Against that background, the airlines face two major but linked unknowns. And we must be clear that there are two separate uh, issues here. One is the impact of the COVID virus. The impact that that has had on, first of all, people's ability to travel because of shutdowns, quarantines, health regulations, but also in terms of how it will affect people's attitude in the future to travel. The second major unknown is the economic crisis. And we should remember that the economic crisis downturn started last year. It doesn't just link to the impact of the coronavirus. There was a downturn uh, uh, partly because of the trade war that was developing between China and the United States. And that will impact on future demand for business travel. It will impact on future demand for leisure travel because of its impact on uh, disposal income. And uh, we will also see changes in business behavior because of things like Zoom. But we have to remember that that decade of profits, uh, which was the background, only meant that effectively a large a small, a small number of large airlines, about 14, I reckon, generated 85% of the world's airline profits. Profits last year were about 30 billion US dollars. That was generated 85% by a small number of very large carriers. The bulk of the airline industry, most airlines are, have either been losing money or have only generated marginal profits, which do not cover the cost of capital. So that's the background against which we now uh, look at the airline industry. And we have to bear in mind that virtually 
All airlines are in intensive care. Many airlines will go into, uh, will need ventilators of some kind, either cash ventilators or some kind of other, uh, other support. And we have to bear in mind that airlines are like uh, people. Those with underlying weaknesses are the ones that will not survive. That's what I wanted to say as an opening statement of where we are. Thank you very much for that, Regus. Um, so I think the um, issues that airlines in the aviation sector faces have been well rehearsed in the media, um, and we are, we are all aware of, of, of what those issues are. Um, I think the, the idea of today's webinar, it's, as I said, it's about the future. It's about how um, industry leaders are going to shape the global airline and aviation sector in the face of huge uncertainty and this fundamental shift in the business landscape. So, Chris, I'm going to ask you the million-dollar question. Um, no pressure, of course, but how, how is the aviation sector going to get out of all of this? Well, thank you very much indeed. I, I'm, people who know me know I don't do pressure. So, um, and what I'm not going to give is a list of those who I think are going to survive or not survive. Uh, that would be invidious and it might cause us all a little bit, bit of difficulty with lawyers and the lawyers who are on the call. But anyway, notwithstanding that, Regis, I think you summed it up um, absolutely spot on. It's not only just in the last upturn that we've seen you know, 14 or 15 airlines generate the industry's profit. And as you said in your um, second point, we're not really interested in what's going on in the industry. We're interested in what is going on at a company level. And we're also interested not only at a company level, but if you like a microcosm of the economy level for the whole aviation system. And I've often written that um, the, the airlines are that necessary element for everybody else to function and everybody else to make money. And if we look at it, uh, I think we've moved to the stage where um, we've got through the initial adjustment phase. Uh, there's been a dash for cash. I've called it the survival capital phase. Uh, and then the next stage is um, how businesses restructure and reform to what will be the overworked term of the new normal. We know it's going to be smaller. We know it's going to take a long time to recover. And recover. And as we go through the call this afternoon, I and my colleagues will spell more out about that. But what I see at the moment is that in a very simple way, in a very simple analytical way, at one end of the spectrum, you've got airlines that had some cash when they went in, or even a reasonable amount of cash. They weren't over geared, and they had assets that they could realize either for sale or use to borrow again. So that's one group. At the other end of the spectrum, we had those who had very little cash, had a lot of debt, and had no assets. And again, you know, we've identified, we've allocated the airlines to each of these boxes. Um, and we can see with the efforts that are going on uh, by airline management and their advisors to uh, uh, access capital, that there's still a long way to go. Not all airlines are going to survive now. Not all airlines are going to survive in the second round where we have to get to a more traditional equity rates. And against that background, what we're seeing is actions taken now and fundamental actions taken now um, will ensure that the investment story is strong enough to raise money. Going back to your point, particular point, Paul, we've been doing some uh, surveying and the, the data of uh, surveys, and the data will be out very soon. Very interesting to look at what is going to give passengers confidence to begin to fly again. And one of the messages that's been underlined here um, and also in other seminars, which I've taken part in, and I'm sure others have too, that it needs to be a coordinated international uh, activity um, to provide common protocols and standards, uh, which then has to be applied so that we know it is, or there is a belief that there's confidence to travel. Once we get that back, people will begin to travel again. Once the, um, we move through the economic impacts, um, then that will provide the kicker as the economies do that growth. And again, Regis, you, you absolutely uh, fundamentally agree about the economic impact. We're going to see some groups where and um, who have actually more disposable income because of lockdowns. We have, we've got others, and particularly in the value end of the market, where they have been able to fly and afford, been able to afford to fly by low, co uh, low fares. That is going to change. Um, I, uh, we see with the quarantines here in other places, we've lost the Northern Hemisphere summer and the all-important sign when airlines will generate that cash, which will get them through the winter. So we have gone through the reaction phase to try and, you know, and, and as Riga said, airlines know how much cash is going out of the door. It's now 
getting that cash in, stabilizing, retaining that capability to restart, restart. So you're not quite sure when it's going to happen. And even ICAO has a scenario um, that by the end of September, in some markets, traffic will still be 90% below what it was 12 months ago. So dislocation, dislocation means challenge and opportunity, and it often depends what side of the trade you're on. Okay, thanks for that, Chris. It's um, one, one of the things that I know we've discussed in some of our preliminary conversations, and I think um, there's no simple answer to this, but it's certainly something I think um, our, our delegates would, would be interested in hearing um, your thoughts on. Um, and perhaps, Peter, I'll sort of pass this over to you to start with. Nobody can truly predict what the customer demand journey is going to be for the aviation sector, starting with the airlines, um, as we come out of lockdown and out of these pandemics. And that leads on to this sort of wider question as well about overall structural change to, to the aviation sector. And these things are inevitably interlinked, although there's slight differences. Maybe if you could just talk to that a little bit about the structural changes and, and sort of customer demand behavioural factors as well. Sure. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Paul. If I can just pick up uh, the, the two, the essential comments that uh, Regas and, and Chris said. And uh, I would refer to, uh, it's just not my saying, it was, uh, I've taken it from an ex-colleague of mine, uh, who the other day uh, said in terms of the current problem within the airline industry, extinction is the common enemy. And uh, that obviously covers the, the elements of uh, the financial pos positions of uh, the uh, airline industry. But I think there's, there's two sides to this. One is it's absolutely, for me, consumer-led. Uh, they need to have the confidence. And, and there's a lot of uh, comment, uh, designs, uh, engineering solutions that are currently being offered by manufacturers of all sorts, including the OEMs, in terms of how can we create, not just on board the aircraft, but through the airport and all the other infrastructure, a safe environment to give the, the passenger the confidence enough to, to travel. And I think we have a long way to go in terms of creating that. And that's subject, of course, to the plethora of rules and regulations, which I think uh, Regas mentioned, that there has to be coordinated and consolidated into such a way that there's, there's a common platform very much uh, as there is today uh, throughout the world on the security systems. So it's consumer-led, and we have to work within the rules and regulations. But as, a, as an airline CEO, you, you have to be an optimist, even in these days of, of, uh, of struggle. And I think uh, Riga's alluded to the fact that for many years, and it's only in the last 10, that uh, airlines have been particularly successful. Um, and I think that there, I ought to have produced a statistic that uh, suggests up until about five years ago that uh, uh, they never covered all the losses that have been made in the previous 50 years. So it's a, it's a business that's notorious for not making much money. It's low margins. And there are huge reasons as to, as to why that is. But the airline industry uh, is great at creating capacity. It's a highly, highly competitive market. Obviously, the consumer benefits from that in terms of lower fares. And uh, if you look at the graphs, you can see as, uh, as passenger demand goes up, uh, so the fares come down. That tends to create a situation where the smaller and older airlines, some of which are state-owned, have created a situation where they have antiquated processes and procedures. They, they haven't adjusted their, because they're not able to for whatever reason. And they themselves now find themselves in quite difficult uh, positions. So I think that there's a huge opportunity. And certainly if I was the CEO of an airline at the moment, I'd be naturally completely focused on, on uh, the liquidity situation, both of which were alluded to, obviously, by, by Regis and Chris. But equally, I'll be spending quite a bit of my management time in making sure, OK, if we're strong enough somehow to come through this from a balance sheet cash flow perspective, we know the marketplace is going to change. What is that? future going to look like and we're trying to you know develop models that sort of gives us an indication uh, uh, to, to help airlines in that respect but the important thing i think is here will be an opportunity to change the equipment to look at more point to point take advantage of the more modern aircraft that are coming through which are lighter more cost effective uh, perhaps uh, that will put pressure on how passengers travel through hubs. So the whole market as we move forward uh, beyond the immediacy of the current problem, uh, I think is, is actually uh, quite exciting, uh, not undermining uh, 
the fact that many airlines currently won't get through the current crisis uh, because they're not in a position to, uh, to survive. Yeah. And, that, and that structurally comes on to the financial element, my last point. And now there's, there's lots of talk uh, around the world about whether the government should, uh, should shore up airlines. Now, I can understand from a strategic conduit point of view the necessity to keep the airlines uh, or the airways open. That, that's fairly obvious. But whether a government should place money into an airline or airlines would have been, which have been notoriously managed uh, in, in terms of not producing profits over a long time to keep them going during this period, uh, only to find that once we go back to normality, whatever that new normality is, to, to go back to, to making losses again, and then how does the taxpayer get its money back? So I, I think some real financial structural issues uh, which uh, need to be resolved, but also uh, the, just the network changes and the opportunities, I think, at the end of the day, uh, that will structurally change and have a huge impact on the airline industry. Look out for the next three parts in this series on the Quantum and Airline Management Group's LinkedIn channels and websites.